Now, if you're hoping to have a baby one day, this may be hard to hear. Sperm counts across the world have plummeted by 62% since 1973. That's according to a new Israeli study. The Hebrew University team behind this research is sounding the alarm bells for both male fertility and male health in general. So of course, the question is what is causing this? Researchers say that falling sperm counts could be linked to obesity, sedentary lifestyles, smoking, and exposure to certain chemicals and pesticides. But joining us with more is Dr. Chagai Levine from the Hebrew University who led this study. I want you to tell us more about these findings. I mean, how were you able to determine such a serious plummet in sperm counts across the world? Hello, Natasha. Uh, the international team that I led reviewed all the published literature on the subject of sperm count. We looked for studies that met our inclusion criteria, and then we modeled uh, by statistical uh, analysis with adjustment to other factors, what are the trends over time. We have seen that from 1973 till 2018, there was a reduction, as you said, of more than 50% in both sperm concentration and total sperm count among men all around the world. We previously found a, a decline uh, among men from North America, Europe, and Australia, but now we saw it also among men from South America, Asia, and Africa. More than that, when we only took the data after the year 2000, the pace of decline more than doubled. So it's accelerating. This is, of right. course, very concerning news, not only for fertility, but also because sperm count is linked to future morbidity and mortality. So the fact that we have low sperm count indicates that men around the world are sick. All right. So... I mean, I think everybody wants to understand what is causing this, right? Especially that, that fact that you just gave that this, we saw a doubling of sperm counts dropping after 2000. I mean, what can that be attributed to? So we didn't check that in these specific studies, but we know from other research done by, by us and by others, what are the factors that harm uh, uh, sperm count. Mm -hmm. So one thing that people are not aware that during fetal development, the fetus is very sensitive and especially the development of the male reproductive system needs to be very, very accurate and it could be easily disrupted. So we know that maternal smoking, we know that stress of the mother and exposure to chemicals that are in plastic, for example, phthalates that are additives that we put into the plastic, we know from human studies and animal studies that if the pregnant mother is exposed to them, it disrupts the proper development of the testicles. So that's the main suspect. Mm -hmm. On top of that, the male reproduction, the sperm is manufactured all the time in adult life, and usually factors that generally harm health were in specific studies linked to poor sperm count, for example, as you said, obesity, mm -hmm. lack of physical activity, smoking and marijuana smoking and other drugs mm -hmm. used, uh, so, and, and poor diet, uh, rich in ultra-processed food. All of these factors harm both our health, but also our male reproduction. You know, how concerned should we be about this data? I mean, what does this mean for the future of mankind? Obviously, we just saw the population reach 8 billion around the world. Um, and, and so we seem to be growing. Does this mean we're going to have fertility issues down the line? I think it's not about the future. It's about the present. I'm talking to you from here from mm -hmm. Adassa Medical Center, and we treat thousands of, of people that have men that have fertility issues. Right. Now, there is a silent epidemic. Many, many, many men in Israel and in any country around the world are unable to do the basic function of reproduction. They may have subfertility or infertility. It's very, very common, and it's under the radar. So I think we should be concerned, but we should have hope. It's not about being right. concerned. It's about doing something. We, we should leverage this problem into giving more attention 
to young men health because I was as a physician of young men in the Israeli Defense Forces. I am very well aware, and we know from the data that young men are doing risky behavior, are not treating well of themselves for chronic diseases and for mm -hmm. a, a general health behavior. And we need to tell you know young men, okay, take care of your health, be right. active, eat well, sleep well, etc. Avoid risky behaviors. On top of that, we should, beside further research, and I must tell you that in the field of male reproduction, it's a neglected field. There is no funding specifically uh, located to this field. And, and many times when a couple have a problem, and they only check the mother 100%. and do not check the... So that, yeah. that's an issue we need to address. And Absolutely. specifically, the issue of chemicals. We live in a world that is heavily polluted with chemicals. We must do better job in regulator, regulating the chemicals. Otherwise, in the future, yes, it may be even yeah. worse. Well, I'd like to thank you so much for joining us. Obviously, we're seeing this booming industry of fertility uh, procedures and medications, whether it's IVF or uh, you know insemination. So there do seem to be trends right now towards trying to promote fertility. But the question is, how do you stop this issue from the get-go? And you guys are doing very important work. Thanks for joining us.